Let me start with a question. What are 2.0 and patch 2.1 to 2.5 called? Most everyone knows it as A Realm Reborn and Post A Realm Reborn, because 2.0 is all A Realm Reborn and everything after is not A Realm Reborn. Before I answer, let me ask you to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff to support me if you like this video. My focus is on guiding players, but this thing sticks out to me, and I may do one or two other of these. Anyway, you're wrong. On both accounts, 2.0 is not A Realm Reborn. Never has been. 2.0 is the 7th Umbral Era. 2.1 to 2.5 is called the 7th Astral Era. This can be proven with a quick look to the journal, because both of these are A Realm Reborn. Two halves of A Realm Reborn with their own arc names. I don't know about the rest of you, but I find the term post-expansion kind of bland at best, describing the time between the 0.5 patch cycle and the next expansion at most. That is post-expansion, when no new content will arrive. If you've been on top of things, you are now out of new content to play. It also just doesn't make any sense to me mentally, which is definitely just a me problem. But really, it doesn't make sense. What expansion did you buy to get 3.0? 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5. Heaven's Word? But only one of those things is Heaven's Word. The other five are not Heaven's Word, they're post Heaven's Word, despite being only accessible with Heaven's Word. Back to how bland it is though, post A Realm Reborn sounds so boring and so corporate. We're adventurers, saving the world from super big issues and all that. But eh, it's post the main adventure. It's all boring and nothingness, despite the fact that the biggest changes in the world all happen in the post-expansion story. Which is the point I now say, hey, the rest of this video is going to have major spoilers, like Ultra Omega spoilers, because I want to detail how bland that is. But I'll stay within an expansion spoilers, so I won't talk about Endwalker spoilers during A Realm Reborn or such. And I'll go in order. You've been warned. So, 2.0 we make a huge change, beating back Gaius and his Ultima weapon. We make no other major pushes forward, but it's a very significant one for the Scions. In terms of story and lore, it's an introduction to the world. A lot happens, but not a lot to overly mention here. I really just gotta say this is the base lore part of the game. In 2.1 we find out that Primals are not what we thought they were that Aether, Emotions, and Prayer are all that is needed for making a Primal. We also meet Elidibus, who seems to have a different role than his brother and sister Ashians. He heavily implies a lot of different story beats, too many to go over for keeping it brief. This ends with the move to the Rising Stones. In 2.2 we learn that Doma has fallen, with the Empire still at large, able to function despite being in a war of succession now that Emperor Solus has died. We also learn that Ashian Powers and the Echo are the exact same thing. We still don't know why, but we know they're in fact the same. This isn't subtext, just outright text. It's the Echo. We get a lot of details about the growing hostilities within Uldah that will make for the main event at the end of 2.5 all to move the Domans to Mordona. 2.3 has some of those old Dawn tensions spill over, becoming the final catalyst for Alpha No to create the Crystal Braves. We even have a name for who is causing such tensions, Teleji Adeleji. This is also the patch where we get to spar with Hori Boulder. That's the most important part of the entire game after all. Anyway, this is also where we begin to move into the Heavensward hooks, fighting heretics and helping Horshafont with his troubles. The Braves are officially created, and important emphasis is put on that Hydaelyn has been quiet ever since she blocked Ultima for us in the Praetorium. In 2.4, things start ramping up even more. Raubon's old found Ilbert arrives to join the Braves and inform there's a traitor in the Immortal Flames. Amaric also shows up to become everyone's second favorite boyfriend. We chase after Iceheart and learn a lot of different things that are important to the Heavensward hook. This is also where Moonbrita flexes her knowledge and we see primals are still yet more than what we thought. Things get even more serious with the news of a new Garlean Emperor, Varys. This is our cue to find the traitor in the flames, who turns out to be a high-ranking member of the flames. A shocking reminder of a how much of a threat the Empire very much still is, 
Gaius was nothing in the grand scheme of things. Worse lies over the horizon. 2.5 has too much to not just list off. A way to kill the Ashians, a giant blast of ether, one that kills Moonbrita when Nabriala's attacks, Midgard's armor removes our blessing of light and just chills with us now, skirmishes against the Empire and the Uldah plot, attacks on Ishgard as the Dragonsong War heads to its climax, the Crystal Braves turn traitor, led by Ilbird, and the Scions are wanted as Nanamo's killers. Everyone disappears leaving you, Alphino, and Tataru to fend for yourselves. Even the detractors of A Realm Reborn near unanimously praise this patch in specific. But hey, it's just post A Realm Reborn. The main thing has been done and gone for a while. Not only is it boring and bland, it just downplays the importance of everything. This is the seventh astral era, an era of growth and prosperity. Yet the irony is that everything has gone wrong. We learned many things, but ultimately things have fallen apart in near every way. From here, I'll be shorter on my patch description since I feel I made my point with post A Realm Reborn and how very little happened and was unimportant. The Echo being Ashian powers? Worthless info, right? That's when we make our escape to Ishgard for the Heavensward story quest. What do you think these are called? Well, 3.0 is indeed called the Heavensward Quest, and that fits beyond the expansion name. 3.0 is all about the Heavensward and defeating them. 3.1 and beyond all being lumped in as post Heaven's Word further ruins the point. We beat the Heaven's Ward! And the dragons are still an issue, and the war is still going on, and now Ishgard is going through a mini civil war, and. Yeah, we made things worse beyond ridding ourselves of one of the villains. The story beats of main Eorzea advance and change, even improve, but the events in Kurthus? Everything has kind of gotten worse, objectively. Iceheart may have become an ally, but her heretics still are making trouble for a bit longer while Ishgard's Pope is now dead. No, it's not post Heaven's Word. The Heaven's Ward are gone, but we still gaze towards the Heavens. It's actually segmented twice. We have a 3.1 to 3.3 as its own mini arc of Heaven's Word called Dragon Song. That's so much more unique, descriptive, and cool. This is the crescendo of the Dragon Song War culminating in the defeat of Nidhogg. It's only after this moment that the other main villain of the expansion is truly defeated. For as awful Thornton is and was, he was far less of a threat, unless the Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate Raid is to be believed. That fanfiction aside, calling the Dragon Song arc just post Heaven's Word sells it far too short. So then we move on to patches 3.4 and 3.5. The lead up to Stormblood that is the most apocalyptic situation we've been in all game. What is it called? Post Dragon Song. Oh. I don't know if this was an internal decision or based on how the fanbase started calling stuff post whatever, but this is still boring and near entirely unrelated to Ishgard. Sure, there's the one short part where Ishgard further pledges itself to Eorzea as a whole, but we're moving away from Ishgard, intentionally. Post Dragon Song is mostly a state of being for the Ishgardians. That's when it would make sense. Nidhogg's eyes being used as a tool is not enough for me. Instead, I would go for something more interesting. How about the Griffin's Song or the Griffin's Reprise? A name that hints at the events without spoiling things. We're near immediately told about and shown the Griffin will be an antagonistic force. The events of these patches are his, and turns out to be Ilbert's, doing. He pushes the Alliance to attack Verasaur's wall, he uses Nidhogg's eyes to summon Shinryu, and he starts the new war for Eorzea's freedom. That's what makes Griffin's Reprise such a good title to me. Shinryu is a dragon of Nidhogg's eyes, a reprise of the Dragonsong War. Dragonsong War. A second war is starting immediately after we finish the last one. How much more interesting a name is that to post Dragonsong? Then Stormblood. This one is sadly split into Stormblood and post Stormblood. No third act like Heaven's Word, which I believe they should have done, because 4.1 to 4.3 could have been Moonlight Requiem. 
Again, allusions to the finale of the patch while having so many meanings and ironies while still relating to the aftershocks of this being caused by Nidhogg's eyes. Though 4.4 and 4.5 are less of a major departure from Stormblood as a whole, we're moving to act in defense of Alamigo and Doma now that they are liberated. Now that a war against Garlemalt is truly about to begin. There are major hints, well, there's text that indicates that this war is going to lead to the Eighth Umbral Calamity, as your allies begin to collapse one by one for unknown reasons. Patch 4.5 is a Requiem for Heroes, which would greatly fit for this set of patches, but would make my Moonlight Requiem suggestion redundant. My point isn't that my specific ideas are good, just that things like this are far more interesting than calling everything post. I just have a bias to like my own titles, and I do find some of it fun. Sadly, instead, it seems that all attempts at naming the arcs was given up at this point. Now everything is just post. It all comes to a head with Shadowbringers because get ready! The greatest names ever are here because we have Shadowbringers, Post Shadowbringers, and... Post Shadowbringers 2. Yes, actually. Three arcs, but we have Post and Post 2. What? Why? How? Why not call 5.1 to 5.3 Light Warden? The irony of us becoming the final Light Warden in the Shadowbringers story while still alluding to events. We reveal the truth of the Warriors of Darkness, begin a new generation of Warriors of Light, and leading up to a fight against THE Warrior of Light, the embodiment of Final Fantasy as a whole. The quintessential ultimate Warden of Light is our final boss here. Something, anything would be better here, especially for post two. Like, we don't even go back to the first during these patches if I am not wrong. Boringly named and just near completely unrelated. We're always carrying on the lessons and rules we learned from the main expansion. But this is the Endwalker intro. This is the point we reach a precipice. Give it any name, anything that isn't just post two. Then finally, we have Endwalker, explicitly marketed as the end of the major Ashian arc of the story, and post-Endwalker. Post-Endwalker is the place that is closest to fitting, since it very much is the start of a brand new story, but it's still so boring. Why not adopt the name of Patch 6.1, Newfound Adventure, or how about the arc name? From what I understand, it's been directly stated to be called the Void Arc. No, not the 24 Man from Heaven's Word. A-R-C. Name it something relating to that? Being just post-Endwalker doesn't pay due diligence to the finality of Endwalker. We still have lessons learned, skills gained, and fallout to deal with, but this is the aftermath of everything we went through for the last 10 years. But hey... It's just a minor footnote. We're post-Endwalker now. And that's why this trend of calling it all post-expansion bothers me. It doesn't indicate how you obtain it, what it's about, or even has any sort of nice denotion. It just exists. And even if it did fit, even if it did match the contents, it's a very, very boring way to refer to things. But hey, next time you see someone say they're in post-Shadowbringers, better be ready to correct them that they're wrong. They're in post-Shadowbringers too. And that's my rant about story arc names. I hope post 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 around we're born finishes off strong though. It can go a lot of fun directions and maybe lead to some cool names in future. Again, please subscribe or such if you enjoyed this, or follow my Twitch to hear me rant about other things potentially, maybe my Patreon or some merch perhaps. Anyway, take care in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. Extra thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks to... Amen Al-Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Frazier97, James Hall, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks for watching, welcome to post-watching.